Welcome back to another episode of the Evo 6 STI Killer, presented by Koyarad. Today we finished putting this thing back together. As you saw last episode, we pretty much finished building out this long block. We still have to get the oil pan on there and the rear main seal. We're still waiting on those parts, but they should be here today, so hopefully you'll see those shortly. In the meantime, we're gonna keep ourselves busy by bolting up everything else, all the accessories, the manifolds. We're gonna get things started off here by installing a sexy intake manifold gasket. Uh, Grimspeed, best known for their Subaru stuff, is now getting into Evo things such as a gasket. So, I'll pull this out. It's a, it's a high quality gasket, so I, I got it because I was not worried that the OEM one would leak, but that I, I figured these guys make uh, really good stuff and this would ensure a proper seal and as you can see I painted our intake manifold here a stainless steel so pro color painting. I think it'll look pretty good yeah. so let's get this bolted up here and then we can move on to the throttle body which is also painted I also got a grim speed throttle body gasket as well here nice thick one now that Pete's got all this shiny stuff bolted up, it's time to bolt up some more not so shiny stuff. This is a AM fuel rail, which is a billet aluminum piece in this uh, black finish. I think it's anodized black, and you can see it's got their laser etched logo on here, and it has a half inch bore diameter, which apparently not only will flow, you know, will support up to 1,000 horsepower, but apparently that diameter, larger diameter, helps dampen uh, fuel pulsations. With, uh, especially with, when you're running a bigger injector like we're going to be. So, uh, and as you can see, we've bolted up the, uh, the factory fuel pressure regulator here. Pete has assured me that it will do the job and I'm gonna trust him on this everyone because it's not my car, so what do I care? It will, it will. Yeah. And the, the one huge advantage of that fuel rail is it's a bolt in item. So mm -hmm. it replaces the factory one and it's got the, the boss or the, the ends are for the factory regulator and the feed line. Yeah, whereas you can see that. all the other rails are usually aftermarket. So right. Yeah, this that's is what a I liked about that one. rail. It's, yeah. it's quite clever. Uh, uh, AM also makes these for like all the golden era Honda stuff. So like if you're 90s, early 2000s Honda guy, uh, they will have a rail for you as well. So these are going to be paired up with our uh, Deech Work injectors, just like we did on the uh, 2J M3. We're going to Deech Works, and these are their 1200cc. Uh, Bosch based injector. I believe it's an EV14 uh, based injector and uh, they dynamically flow match the, the each uh, set that you get from them. So they actually, I think it's like a four step process that they go through to test these as dynamically as they can to you know, simulate real, real, real world usage and then match them up so you get a, a truly matched set for your motor. Uh, these will support way more horsepower than uh, we're going to be able to squeeze out of this engine. So we're definitely not undersized on the injector. They also supply really good characterization data, which your tuner is going to need when uh, setting up your ECU for these injectors. It's interesting, looking on their website, they even had characterization data for specific ECUs as well as a universal set of data. So uh, pretty impressive the amount of uh, you know, data they're making available to you. And they have a huge range of direct fit injectors. These, again, are direct fit for the Evo. This rail being direct fit, these should all just match up and plop in the hole. But they also offer them in universal fit, too, if you're looking for that kind of thing. So. Let's get to uh, installing these. I have uh, lubricated the O-rings on both ends with the supplied Super Lube. And any company that sends me something that's, that's got Super Lube in it, I'm down. So let's go, PT. Let's get started here. What do you say? I put them in the rail first or in the motor first? You've got a technique for I'm this, don't you? I'm a put them in the rail kind of guy first. Put them first. in the rail first. All right, let's, let's get started then. Just drop these in here as carefully as I can. Because uh, injectors are... Not designed to be dropped, are they, Pete? No, let's, no, no. Let's not drop be anything gentle, here. Be gentle, please. Be gentle. No, we're going to give the Evo a fighting chance against the STI here. Gonna need every advantage it can get. Keep up with that that angry boxer I got ready for you here. So I don't know, man. I feel like you're going to have to make some more power to uh, compete with me ah, here. Don't worry about power. The about handling that? and the chassis is far superior, in my opinion. So you yeah. know. You know what the STI has, though, PT? It's got the driver mod, buddy. Oh man. Mod. This is going to be a, a battle of the ages. It is, it is. And uh, by the way, I wasn't lying, everyone. That's what I'm talking about right there. That is the good stuff. There you have it. Our fuel rail is bolted down. And uh, we did add in a spacer here to allow us to run this uh, OE line to the fuel pressure regulator. 
it was uh, without those spacers, it was hitting on the rail. So just threw those in there to uh, fit it up the way we wanted. And we also plugged this, uh, was it one eighth NPT port? I think it is, Pete. Which, I think so. Uh, yeah. You, you could either like run a fuel pressure gauge in, or uh, some guys use it for like a nitro setup. Uh, you could even put a sensor in there too, couldn't you? We talked about maybe adding a fuel pressure sensor to this setup, uh, depending on how desperate Pete is to keep up with the STI. So with that done, we are moving on to our coil-on plug setup, which uh, for that we've gone with MA Performance, who offer this really nice uh, billet mounting plate with these uh, Denso Denso coil. They are like an OE style coil that I believe are rated to like 700 horsepower. I don't believe Pete's hoping to uh, make that kind of power, but at least it gives you the peace of mind that you know they're more than uh, capable of meeting the humble power goals that this motor is going to get. What are, you, what are you hoping for, Pete? Give us a number. I know you hate giving numbers. 350 but to 400. That's all, that's all I need, you man. You think that's enough? I, it's going to be enough. <sighs> I think you're going to need 500 to keep up with me. But in any case, uh, I really like this uh, coil unplug style setup, and it comes with this... Uh, wiring harness, which is designed to integrate with the factory wiring harness, which takes all the thought out of it. I mean, it's just plug it in and go. So I think that's a really nice touch. And they also include stainless hardware. And this obviously being built of aluminum, is not going to rust. So it's a nice showpiece on top of the motor here. It does. It looks it? real good, man. Yeah, I think it's like going it to... Uh, and obviously upgrading to a coil on plug setup like this will give you uh, better, more reliable spark. You can actually gap your plugs a little bit wider. Uh, you can, you know, apparently they will even improve things like idle quality. So uh, all in all, I think it's a, the, the right way to go on these types of motors, isn't it, Pete? Here's our part, MA Performance to the rescue. Man, thank you guys for getting this up to us so quickly. And sketchy setup here has occurred. What we had to do is just move a little bit of our uh, engine mounting set, set up here so we can clear the bolts on our engine stand and now I should be able to just drop this in there we go and get that on those little dowels yes all right sweet DP thankfully that is in I'll get the bolts in and then we can do the oil pan next I bet a bunch of you are about to light me up in the comments section. I did indeed forget some silicone. So now we can put this back on without the stress or worry that this is going to leak. Because if I had forgotten that, man, that would have been some serious work to get at this DP. Well, now that you've called it silicone too, the, the grammar Nazis can bust your balls because that's... Uh, uh, gasket maker? Gasket oh, maker. Gasket it's maker. Ultra right, gray, right. Peter, which meets Mitsubishi's factory specifications. Joke's on you, I'm using window cocking. Time to lube up the oil pan and I've got the right stuff from Permatex. I'm not using the Mitsubishi specified gray gasket maker. That's because this one I had kicking around and it's just got this nice little uh, nozzle here as you can see. Yeah. I can really get it. And they do specify a four mil wide bead, which you can control nicely with that stuff. Yeah, otherwise right? you'll end up uh, hard, right? speed this up, DP. Yeah, and I think the only real difference between this right stuff and the gray is that this just dries faster. I think so. so yeah, I think it'll that's... seal just fine, but... Well, if we've got a, a, a leaking oil pan, then we'll know why. Yeah, the internet can say, I told you so, that's PT. Right. Okay, let's flip this over. I've got it the right way. Pop it in. Bam. And hit it with a hammer. <laughs> you guys notice something about our oil pan? Yeah, look at how good it looks. And that yeah. dent is the mostly dent is gone. mostly gone. And yeah. uh, it's because we ended up giving a little shot of black paint. And check the finishing touch out here. Look at these. Ooh. New bolts, New eh? New bolts, man. How nice are those? And these are from MA Performance. I saw them on the, the website when I was shopping, and I thought, who doesn't want new oil pan bolts? Ours are crusty. They didn't look good. So this was a perfect time to make that upgrade. Now, you definitely do not want to over-torque these bolts. I'm going to 7 newton meters as per the factory manual. And the two bolts that I'm working on right now, these guys here, they both are are shorter, as you can see, they're, they're different heads than the other ones. So these two ones you want shorter. Apparently, 
It can, uh, if you put longer bolts in there, it can interfere with the oil pump. Is that it, DP? Yeah, they're in the oil pump like location the there. Oh no, maybe that's the, the counterbalance the shaft balance and the shaft. pulley in there or something. Anyways, there's a potential for some interference there, so uh, just make note. We just spent a little bit of time looking to figure out that, so if you're watching this video, putting together an EVO oil pan, those are the, that's the spot where the two bolts go. Okay, I think we're good here. Let's get this rotated and get started on the really fun stuff. I'm just installing the last stud of our MA Performance exhaust stud kit here. And uh, I've gotta ask, Evo experts, we couldn't find this on the internet. Do you just hand tighten these studs in or do you do what I'm doing right now, which is the double nut method and tighten them up that way? I just I couldn't find anything out there that was specific. The manual doesn't state anything, so we just don't know. I figure uh, better safe than sorry and double nut this. I know you're not supposed to go crazy when you're tightening this, but you see like it was, it's so loose when, uh, when I tighten it just by hand. So I find this at least will give me the reassurance of that. I was also thinking, do you possibly put in a little, or uh, add a little bit of Loctite on here? But then I thought, that's just stuff's just gonna burn off, maybe? I or don't you'll know. You'll never get them out again. Or, or, yeah, I, like, I'll it seems like a iffy idea to me, but I don't uh, know. But or like, am I overly worried? Like these never just back out. As long as you get new studs, you're good to go. So there we are. We've got that in place. Let's get an OEM gasket on here, and then finally I can show you our manifold. Bam! Here it is, guys. This is the full race. Pro stock exhaust manifold. This thing is going to make some serious power. It is robotically welded. They use some of the best metal out on the market. They also, if you have a close look up here, these are all nicely ported, all the exhaust ports. And a, a really important thing to me actually is they make sure to machine this flange so it's 100% flat. I've had problems in the past where you put these aftermarket manifolds on and then they end up leaking and it's just because the 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 flange warps because of the amount of heat that they have to put into welding this up. So Full Race, of course, if you guys don't know, they are one of the leading companies out there that make exhaust manifolds. These things are proven to make power. The one sacrifice that needs to be made to run a tubular manifold like this is the bolts are a little hard to get to. And it's not so much when it's on an engine stand like this, but when you're in a view, in, in, when the engine is inside the car and you're trying to get at these to either take it off or put it on, it requires a little bit of cursing and swearing, but eventually you get there. And I think I, all right, that feels pretty good. By the way, these are supposed to be tightened to 33 newton meters. And I think these are 50, 55, 55 newton meters. So she is on there. Now it's time for that Garrett turbo. Here she is, the heart of my engine, a Garrett G25 turbo, but this is actually the smaller version. Dave is running the 660, I have the 550. Nevertheless, these are some of the best small housing turbos on the market for power and spool, and they do that by the Garrett's new design of their turbine and um, exhaust housing wheels they are 15 to 20% more efficient than the old GTX line. So these things certainly pack a punch. As for the exhaust housing, this is a V-band setup. It's stainless steel, and this is the 9-2 housing. And I do have a, I think this is a what? A 7-2 yeah. housing. So this would be, it would provide even faster spool, but uh, at a loss of top end, I'm thinking the, 9-2 housing is the way to go. I gotta give a shout out to ATP Turbo who uh, ended up hooking me up with this housing. Thank you so much. Garrett was actually out of them and ATP had one in stock. So uh, ATP supply, stocks a ton of this stuff. So if you're looking for housings, turbos, check them out as well. Well, PT, I'm a little puzzled by your choice to go with the slightly smaller G25, the 550, but you must think that this, uh, this 4G is a pretty special motor to go a little smaller, but... I want the spool. The spool. I feel like this thing's going to make the top end, and it's going to have the spool. The spool's for fools, everybody. You need the, the top end to win races. Anyway, we'll find out soon, but I will give you top marks for your choice of manifold. This full race manifold is 
a work of art. That merch collector is something else. And uh, we've actually been buddies with Jeff at Full Race for a very long time. I think I wrote a story about like one of his very first project cars back in the Modified Magazine days. I want to say like 2005. We've known him forever. And uh, let's just say he wants to extend his friendship to all of you. So he's been kind enough to offer uh, a 5% discount on anything over $299 off of their website. That's full-race.com. And you could even apply that to, oh, I don't know, something like tile products. It doesn't have to be a manifold. They sell all kinds of good stuff at Full Race, including Look at these. the shiny goodness from tile, like these two bad boys here. And uh, I will say, Pete, interesting choice of color. Kind of like uh, interesting choice in the smaller turbo. I wanted to go bold. Look at you. You want I love a black valve cover, yeah, but you want like purple. That's going to look Waste badass. It, it, will, it will look pretty cool, but you can get them in different colors. Obviously, that's not the most important factor when choosing your wastegate and your blow-off valve, but uh, I should mention this is uh, Tile's MVR gate, 44 mil, and it packs a lot of technology into it. They use uh, very high-quality alloys, both in the body and in the valve, to uh, make it live a very long time in extreme conditions like this we'll be living through. You can see it's also got uh, two uh, upper airports, three lower airports to make it very easy to uh, you know, configure, to set up. And it's also got optional water ports, which, uh, as Pete learned recently, are important to use for water rather than air. And uh, we may consider water cooling this because it lives right down here by the downpipe. You can see it's going to live really close to the downpipe. And uh, Tile recommends water cooling in a situation like this where the top of it is going to be exposed to a lot of heat or just in general like motorsports applications where you're going to be you know, exposing it to a lot of heat. They also mentioned rotaries as a source of heat and as a rotary guy I can confirm that is in fact true. If it's just a streetcar application though you don't need to water cool it so I'm not sure where you are on that decision Pete. I... I'm not sure either. I want to get everything bolted on. We got to get the downpipe fabricated all that and yeah. then we can look at where we're at. It's a like, bit of a job to plumb water into yeah. it. But... I mean it's right next to the airflow through the rad so It's true. There might be know? some cooling there although there's a lot of tubularness That's going on That's right. There too. It's, it's a tough decision. As for the blow off valve, Pete's gone with the QRJ model. I think it's a 38 mil and uh, it is a very high performance, high flowing blow off valve. And man, if you take a look on the top of these, they yeah, have more important Speed is Speed Academy logos on yes, here. Thank you, Tile. Look at for that. Coming through, man. They like, even said, how cool. They put sponsorship material on here, not for resale. Not we're, that ne we're never reselling these God, things. No, Come God, on. No. When, you, when you put our logo on it, it's, it's with us for life. So. Thank you very much, Tyle. That's a really cool touch. It's neat to see something like that. The last item up here before we wrap this episode is our turbo oil lines. And I don't have any. And this is where I'm reaching out to you guys. I'd like to get your opinion on how to do this properly. Uh, do we go out and get custom lines made? This is a banjo fitting here that needs to go down to the turbo. And on the other side, I'm going to need a custom oil return line as well. So do I just use a rubber line and get some like AN style fittings uh, uh, purchased maybe from Vibrant. Same thing for the water side. So if you guys can post in the comments, let me know are there existing kits that I can make work with this very easily or should I be looking the custom route? So I think that is going to be officially a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. By the way, if uh, you're interested in any of the products in this video, make sure to check the video description. They are all listed there and support those companies because they support us, which means in turn, you're supporting us as well.